many people associate physics with a set of equations, formulae, theorems, and so on. In short, indecipherable things. However, physics is not so far removed from reality and does not only focus on the study of atoms and the cosmos. In fact, the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physics has been awarded to a study of complex systems. You probably have not heard of this concept before, but it's closer to you than you think. But what is a complex system? In short, it's a system made up of a bunch of components, particles, neurons, organisms that interact with each other. As a result of these interactions, the overall behavior of the system cannot be deduced from the individual behaviors of its components. To understand this better, let's look at a couple of examples. When a small group of birds flies in the sky, each bird follows its own path. However, large groups of birds fly together, occasionally migrate and even form patterns like the one we're looking at. A neuron is a cell capable of receiving and transmitting information by means of electrical pulses. From a physical point of view, a neuron is a fairly simple electrical system. However, clusters of many neurons lead to much more complex brain functions, such as intelligence, memory, or consciousness. Okay, now you might be thinking, what does this have to do with me? Well, it does. Society, being made up of people, groups, institutions, governments, can be understood as a complex system. Let's look at some models that attempt to describe different social aspects from the physics of complex systems. We start with social consensus models. The most simple models consider that there are two possible options, option A or option B, on a given issue. Each person is characterized by the option he or she chooses. For example, the options could be to vote left or right. Everyone is related to a number of people, which from now on we will call neighbors. Depending on the choices made by his or her neighbors, the individual can change his or her choice. How does a change of choice occur? There are several mechanisms. Let's explain two of them. The first is imitation. This consists of randomly choosing a neighbor and blindly adopting his or her choice. Let's introduce Bob, who's going to make an option change by imitation. It does not matter whether Bob is yellow or pink. All that matters is what his neighbors are like. Bob has six neighbors, two of which are yellow and the other four are pink. The fact that there are more pink neighbors than yellow neighbors makes it more likely that Bob will turn pink by randomly choosing a neighbor. Specifically, there's a four-sixth chance that he will take the pink option and a two-sixth chance that he'll choose the yellow option. Which neighbor will Bob choose? Place your bets. The winning option is the yellow one. The model we have just depicted is known as the voter model. Let's rewind. Let's move on to the second switching mechanism, the social pressure mechanism, whereby the most popular opinion is adopted. Bob is in the same situation as before, he's going to make a change of choice. As we can see, the pink option is the most supported, so Bob is going to turn pink 100% of the time. This model is known as the majority rule model, which coincides with the spin-flip kinetic icing model at zero temperature. The aim of social consensus models is to answer the question, is a consensus reached in which all people have adopted the same option or a situation of coexistence of both options? To answer this question, we have to pay attention to something we have ignored so far, how individuals relate to each other. That is to say, what the network of connections is like. If we consider a regular network in which each person is only connected to his or her neighbors in a lattice, the dynamics leads to a consensus. On the other hand, if everyone interacts with everyone else, we might think that it is easier to reach a consensus. However, the result is counterintuitive. In a fully connected network in which everyone is connected to everyone else, there is always coexistence of options for large enough systems. Another aspect of society that can be studied from the point of view of complex systems is that of language competition. Let us explain the abram strogatz model, which describes the dynamics of two languages coexisting in the same territory. We can imagine it as a competition in which each of the languages wants to impose itself on the other. What'll happen? Will one of the two languages become extinct, or will they continue to coexist? 
For the sake of simplicity, let's consider a territory in which two generic languages, A and B, are spoken. We will also assume that all its speakers are monolingual. We will then have a total number of speakers that use A and a total number of speakers that use B. If we divide these quantities by the total number of speakers, we obtain the speaker densities of each language. What we are interested in is what is the probability that a speaker changes language. In this model, the probabilities are calculated in this way. You may ask, what are the S's and the V? The S's correspond to prestige, a property of each language related to factors such as media, education, or socioeconomic influence. To simplify, we consider that the more prestige one language has, the less prestige the other language has. Mathematically, this relationship must be fulfilled. On the other hand, the V corresponds to volatility, which is a property of social dynamics. It has to do with the reluctance of speakers to switch languages. So, how will the battle between the two languages end? The most important factor for the outcome is volatility. Low volatility means that people have a low tendency to switch languages out of ignorance or stubbornness. The situation leads to the dominance of one language and thus to the extinction of the other. High volatility, on the other hand, implies a predisposition to switch languages. Therefore, in this case, we'll have language coexistence. In the following, we will explain this so-called infection, contagion, and spreading models. These describe how diseases, rumors, fads, or ideas spread through society from an initial source. We will distinguish between two types of models, simple contagion and complex contagion. We start with simple contagion models, which are used to describe the spread of a disease. In this model, pairwise interactions are considered, so that if a healthy person and a sick person are in contact, the contagion will occur with a certain probability. Mainly, we can distinguish between two models of simple contagion, the SIS and the SIR. The SIS model considers that the population is divided into two groups, infected people and healthy people who are susceptible to infection. This model focuses on the study of diseases whose sufferers do not become immune after infection. The possible changes in an individual can be schematized as follows. A susceptible person becomes infected and, on recovery, becomes susceptible again. Diseases such as tuberculosis or meningitis follow the SIS pattern. The SIR model studies diseases from which infected people become immune when they recover. Therefore, to the two previous population groups, a third group is added, immune persons. In this case, the path that an individual can follow is as follows. He or she starts out healthy and susceptible to infection, then becomes infected, and finally recovers and is therefore immunized. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the SIR model has been used to study the progression of the virus around the world. When studying the spread of disease through these models, several factors must be considered, such as the average number of contacts per day an infected person has and the proportion of contacts that eventually result in infection. Let us turn to models of complex contagion, which study the spread of rumors, fads, innovations, information. While simple contagion follows a single exposure rule, complex contagion demands multiple exposures for transmission. The model often used to describe complex contagion phenomena is the threshold model. It consists in assuming that if a certain number of one's neighbors behave in a particular way, the node will also adopt that behavior. Examples of this phenomenon are people who cross the street at red lights when they see others doing so, people who go on strike if many of their colleagues do so, or people who start smoking because of the influence of their close circle. To better understand this model, let's explain the last example in detail. Let's take Bob and his six friends. If none of his friends smoke, Bob will not smoke either. However, if all of his friends smoke, Bob will also start smoking. Where's the limit? How many smoking friends does it take for Bob to give in to temptation? The ratio of smoking friends needed to the total number of friends is the threshold value. This can vary depending on many factors, such as gender, culture, or age. 
For example, young people have a lower threshold, as they are more susceptible to influence. The physics of complex systems can also be used to study cultural diversity. The model that does this is Axelrod's model. It assumes two principles. Homophily, whereby similar people interact more with each other, and social influence, whereby the more two people interact, the more similar they become. This model labels everyone according to a number of characteristics. For example, language, sport, cuisine, or religion. When two individuals interact, one is likely to adopt a characteristic of the other. But what is the probability that an interaction will take place? The probability of two people interacting is the fraction of their common characteristics among the total number of characteristics. Here is Bob again with his new mustache. He has a group of friends with whom he shares his likes and hobbies. One day, Bob meets a new friend and begins to adopt some of his tastes. In doing so, Bob no longer has as much in common with his other friends as he did before. In this model, moving closer to some means moving away from others. So, what will be the final result of a group of people? Will they all have the same tastes or will they all be different from each other? Axelrod's model allows for situations in which there are subgroups of people with different tastes. This highlights how a mechanism of local convergence gives rise to global polarization. This is precisely what happens in real life. People are divided into territories with different cultures. Therefore, cultural diversity can be predicted from a physical model. Now that we have seen that there are physical models that can describe different aspects of society, we hope to have convinced you that physics is closer to you than you thought. Scientists have all these models at their disposal, and when a new problem arises, they choose the model that best incorporates relevant mechanisms of social interaction. What all the systems described above have in common is that they show behaviors that cannot be predicted by focusing on the individual components, but which emerge spontaneously as a consequence of their interactions. They are said to be self-organized. This is a characteristic not only of social systems, but of all complex systems. Another characteristic of complex systems is universality, whereby some details do not matter. The question is to identify which are relevant or irrelevant details. If you notice, during the video we have represented all people with this symbol. The symbol tells us nothing about their age, gender, nationality, or personality and, for many questions, we don't really need to know all this information to describe the overall behavior of the system. Did Newton care about the color of the apple that fell on his head when he developed his law of universal gravitation? And it doesn't end there. Not only do we not need to know the characteristics of people, but in many situations, it doesn't even matter that they're people. That is, universality also manifests itself in such a way that systems for people, neurons, particles, or animals exhibit the same collective behaviors. For example, we can draw an analogy between a colony of ants and a brain. In the analogy, an ant plays the same role as a neuron. At the beginning of the video, we told you that large clusters of neurons give rise to cognitive functions. The same thing happens in an ant colony. Thanks to their interactions, the colonies make decisions, divide up work, and move together. As you have seen throughout the video, complexity science is an interdisciplinary science. That is to say, it encompasses many different disciplines, such as statistical physics, sociology, biology, or psychology. The study of complex systems offers us a new way of understanding the world. Although there is still a long way to go, we are on the right path towards understanding reality.